Kenya, the home of tea production. The most popular drink in the world after water. A global industry worth $21 billion a year. It employs one in 10 Kenyans. Like thousands of others, this woman is going to a job interview for work on a tea farm. Hello? But the manager tells her to meet at a hotel. You really want a job? She finds herself trapped in a room at the mercy of a sexual predator. We reveal the tea world's most shameful secrets. Managers demanding sex for jobs. The local community is left with nothing but tears. Yes. If you look at the atrocities committed before these products eventually comes to your table, uh, they are heinous crimes. My name is Tom Odula, and I'm an investigative reporter from Kenya. For 20 years, I've covered crime and terrorism in my country, from the Westgate shopping mall attack in Nairobi to the war in Somalia. I don't need to beat my woman. But nothing could have prepared me for what this investigation would reveal. Kenya's Rift Valley is where many of the world's most popular tea brands are produced. From PG Tips to Lipton to Sainsbury's Red Label, half of all the tea drunk in the UK alone comes from tea leaves grown here. The leaves are handpicked by workers who get paid when they reach their quarter. It's taken to nearby factories, dried and processed, then transported to key markets like the UK for packaging and sell on supermarket shelves. But the workers say they are being severely exploited by the companies behind these brands. It's backbreaking work, which thousands of employees say has left them with life-changing injuries. Many of the women who work here say that on top of that, their managers sexually abused them. And this has gone on for decades. While researching this film, we spoke to a hundred women who work on the Kenyan tea plantations. A staggering 75 said they'd been the victim of sexual harassment at work. Ten of these women agreed to be interviewed on camera, provided we conceal their identities. How has sexual exploitation affected you as a person? Jeremiah Koske, a divisional manager for the British Dutch multinational company Unilever, which has produced PG tips and Lipton teas since the 1980s. He has over 800 employees working under him. The women say work is scarce and they are desperate. They are left with no choice but to give in. 
nikafanya hiyo kazi kidogo tukasema tukasema tulala nayo yeye ndo anakusimamisha kazi eh alafu mkaa na yeye nikakupale kwa sababu nilikuwa nataka kazi kwa sababu nilikuwa na watoto kwa shule siezi nikapoteza kazi nilikuwa na watoto lakini pia nayo tena unabaki ukiofia unasema siku moja mzee wangu akijua si ndoa yangu itakuwa inafunjika maisha yangu ukiniona hivi pia itakuwa mzito tu kwenda mbele maisha yangu pia bado ni msito hakuna mahali mzigo itapungua hakuna hakuna mwenda mwelezea shida zangu anielewa i decide to act and recruit an undercover investigator we'll call her Katie Katie will approach Jeremiah in search of a job and see if he tries to subject her to the same treatment. What motivated you to put yourself at risk? So many women go through this and it was time for the general public to know what exactly happens in these companies. Katie calls Jeremiah. He says there are no work opportunities at present. But after she drops off her CV in person, that seems to change. Yes. That is so good. I normally don't remember people. I don't know why I remember people. Eh, ni na shukuru. Katie is invited to an induction day, but the job has still not been confirmed. So, doctor, I'm going to take a look at you in the liver. And then, Miss Wengine, then Jeremiah gives a speech to his new recruits. Kwa na nidhamu kwa cooperative kazini na viongozi wote na pia na wenzako. 2 hours after the induction, Katie is back home when she receives a phone call. Nipo salama Mr. Jeremiah. He seems to want to congratulate Katie, though he has still not formally offered her a job. But then his tone changes. <laughs> Katie's cover story is that she's staying with her aunt. Are you still Jeremiah tells her to meet him at a nearby hotel bar that evening. I think he was trying to establish whether or not he could come to my place. It was very uncomfortable for me, honestly, because Mr. Jeremiah was the most senior guy, but he's still the one ringing me up his subordinate to go out with later that night. So, how are you? Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Katie finds Jeremiah in a private room. She still doesn't know if he's going to give her a job. Kazi tunaka kama tunanza hii wiki na kuja. We hope so. Jeremiah seems to have something other than work on his mind. Jeremiah lives on the Unilever tea estate he manages, Jamji. As the divisional manager, he has his own compound. It felt pretty transactional because he was now asking me to go back to his house with him. Even from where I sat as an undercover investigator, I felt pressured. I could only imagine how this then translated to women who desperately needed this job. Uko jamji unaishi pekee yako? Ya 
Jeremiah seems put out, but still appears confident that while Katie works for him, she'll also have to go out with him. If my whole life really was pegged on this opportunity, I can only imagine how that encounter would have unfolded. Jeremiah's behavior with Katie follows a pattern outlined by other female employees. The following weekend, Katie still has not begun work on the Unilever Jamji farm. Jeremiah invites himself to her home. Hello. I felt like I was now expected to be at his beck and call, and I needed to show up because I was yet to start the job. Immediately, he asks her to get into his car. I didn't want to be in such an enclosed and private space with him. He was getting angry with my very firm nose. As Katie starts to walk away, Jeremiah's mask appears to slip even further. It was disgusting. I was not interested in this man in any way. He really wanted to show me what he was capable of. It's not something he's used to. Unilever says its workplaces operate a zero-tolerance policy towards sexual harassment. Jeremiah even mentioned it in his induction day speech to Katie and the other 36 Unilever recruits. Yeah, of course we have a sexual harassment policy which is in place in the company. So in case of anything, we also report. But according to women who work for him, it's a policy Jeremiah regularly ignores. Jeremiah is gay, so you can say that he's gay and he's gay. He's gay and he's gay. He's gay. Recruiting managers have so much power over these women because competition for jobs on the tea plantations is fierce. Sisi tumekuwa tukiajiriwa hapa. Unilever. Lakini mifikia mahali sasa hiyo kazi pia hakuna. Kwa sababu ya machine. The introduction of mechanical harvesting machines in recent years has led to a dramatic reduction in Unilever's workforce. Five years 
Thousands of Unilever tea workers have found themselves made redundant in the last decade. Nearly two weeks since a section of residents taught several tea plucking machines. Some have been protesting against their former employer. And even made national news when they set 11 Unilever harvesting machines on fire. When you go to Nisisi, Nisisi, we feel desperate, so desperate, and that is why we are telling you we are ready for anything. For anything. For anything. Na hiyo machine ndi mefanya mpaka kasi, tumefanya nini? Tumekosa kasi. Ili waone kwamba, tunayendelea kupunguza hiyo mwisho ya watoi hiyo vitu. Kwa sababu tumuongea na mudomo, hawasiki. Hakuna kazi ingine inapatikana huko. Hakuna kazi ingine inapatikana hapa. One in three adults in this region is unemployed with tea accounting for most work opportunities. Like the women we have spoken to, these demonstrators say Unilever managers abuse that situation. And the women themselves say the introduction of machines has only increased the levels of exploitation. Sasa venye director ilichukua shamba ya hii machine, hii machine ikakuja kuchukua shamba zenye tulikuwa tunatumia asi. Utakuja kuandiku wata lini at least ufanya. So mtu unasema, ni beta ni kubali, at least nifanya hii mezi yenye tunafanya. Eric Mutai is the governor of Kericho County, where many of the tea farms are based. He says large-scale redundancies in recent years have left workers in a desperate situation. When the tea estate brought the machines, a total of up to 50,000 casual laborers were sacked. So what you saw is deep. There is deep pain running within the host community. The investor is making 200% profit. Local community is left with nothing but tears. Women who work at Unilever's Jamji estate say if you refuse Jeremiah's advances, you don't get employed. Katie Zill gets a job because her application has already been sent to head office. She's assigned to the weeding team. It's one of the toughest jobs on the farm. The lady, the kind of work she's doing is the hardest labor in the plantation. Her body will inevitably start breaking down. Every day she'll be going home with pain. Katie's back begins to hurt her, and she questions how long she can keep this up. And inevitably she will come and ask the supervisor for lighter duties or a different working area. And this is when he takes the opportunity to tell her that in order for her to get an easier workload, she has to sleep with him. Her supervisor is called Samuel Yebe. He says he can make her life easier by moving her to lighter duties in the farm's nursery. But by the end of her second day at work, Samuel makes it clear he expects something in return. Samuel wants to know about her living arrangements. He seems to think that Katie now owes him something because he's planning to give her lighter duties. Samuel continues to press Katie for an invitation to her home. He seems to feel like it's his right. These leaders have an understanding of how difficult the job is. So they anticipate that you're going to approach them to ask for help. So they position themselves in such a way that you understand that it's transactional, really. 
if you need to make money and you can't quit your job, then you will need to pay in one form or another. Sasa unipeleki na sasa? I just needed lighter duties because I was struggling to cope. But in exchange, he wanted my body. Other women who work for Samuel say Katie's experience is typical. Yebe yanataka kulala na mwanamke yeyote ule mwenye ametaka kwa kazi na analala nao kwa field ndi uendelee na yeye kazi Since sleeping with him how has your life been affected Ninaumia kindani lakini sasa siwezi ambia mtu na juu ya maisha na watoto niko nayo inabidi niamke tu niende na uchungu mwingi sana At the end of her first week working at Unilever, Katie still hasn't been moved to the nursery. She sends a text message to Samuel asking to meet and discuss her move to lighter duties. In a thinly veiled sexual reference, he says only if there will be honey to lick. If he doesn't have an opportunity to lick the honey, as he put it, then there's no need of meeting. This is your direct line supervisor. To be sexual with you, it is definitely inappropriate. Samuel finally agrees to meet Katie to discuss her move to lighter duties at a resort hotel on the edge of the plantation. It's not long before Samuel starts asking for something else in return. He wanted an opportunity to experience me for the time that I'll be working for Jamji. Mm. I did find it dehumanizing and it clearly didn't matter to him because he's the team leader and you need him so you just draw the line. Katie refuses. You have not yet and is So so when you mean the hook already at the meaning she said my then I hand my my communication just like that. Samuel gives Katie a final ultimatum. While Katie was undercover at Unilever's Jamji T estate, this woman was also working for Samuel A.B. She says he made her a similar proposition. Ani nitongosa nikakata. Akaanza kunipanga kazi kipimo kubwa. Kaniambia lazima nitimize ahadi yake ndio nipate kazi next yenye na nini? Ku renew contract. Sasa ikabidi nifanye hivyo kwa sababu nilitaka hiyo contract. Niliogopa lakini ilinibidi tu. She says accepting Samuel's demands has had life-changing consequences. Nilikuwa nimeolewa lakini hiyo ilifanya tukaachana na mzee wangu. Hii yenye ya kulala na huyu team leader kwa nini? Kwa chai ndani. Na mlitumia protection. Atume. Ndio nilienda nikapima. 
nimeafektiwa na ugonjwa wa ukimwi She is certain it was Samuel who passed the disease on to her. Five weeks after rejecting Samuel's advances, Katie has still not been moved from the tough weeding job. Do you think it's because you did not accept his demands? That's the conclusion I made. He, in the beginning, was very willing to help me out, but he went silent the moment he knew that our relationship was not going to go any further. But still, Samuel continues to pressure her for sex. Mm. Mm. So I hope you have a plan. For me, <laughs> Workers from Jamji say that Samuel can get away with sexual harassment because of his close relationship with the divisional manager, Jeremiah. Wanakuanga pamoja sana. Wanakuanga marafiki wa karibu. Sasa Jeremiah ni za tumamtu kufanya kazi yebe. Eh, ata yeye ndiye anatuma yebe. Unilever has known about this issue for more than a decade. In 2011, the Kenya Human Rights Commission published a report alleging sexual exploitation was rampant on its plantations. The company announced a zero-tolerance approach, yet little appears to have changed. Do you fear? Reporting. Unanda una report, wana kuambia tu nafua tilia. Inaenda hivu. Una baadhi ya watu wa ilipereka malalamisi kwa agenda, waka achishwa. Katie decides it's time to test Unilever's zero tolerance approach to sexual harassment. She reports Jeremiah and Samuel's predatory behavior to Jamji's assigned sexual harassment officer, head of welfare Daniel Ruto. Mimi nimekuja kukuongelesha kuhusu mkubwa Mr. Jeremiah na Mr. Ebe. She explains that before starting her job, Jeremiah pursued her and invited her to a bar where nataka tuende na wewe nyumbani. And a few days later, he drove to her house where he So I invite ninge kwa gari. Nikamwambia sitaweza na akabadilika tu kabisa. When Katie started working, her immediate supervisor, Samuel Yebe, also harassed her, linking any help he gave her with the need to be repaid sexually at a future date. Katie spells out in detail exactly what happened with Jeremiah and Samuel. Daniel Ruto seems to have heard these allegations before. According to the company's sexual harassment policy, these allegations should be investigated thoroughly. But instead, Ruto suggests that it's up to Katie to firmly say no to her two bosses' sexual advances. He didn't give any tangible solutions. He then promised to have a lady from his department call me to offer counseling services and advise me on how to proceed. But this lady never called. So I texted him a few days later, but he never responded to my message. No response or action was taken. He's not dealing with a bigger issue, which is women getting sexually harassed by their team leaders and managers. After eight weeks undercover, Katie was pulled out by the production and given rest and counseling.
It's not just staff at Unilever who say they suffer poor conditions and sexual harassment at work. Kuna mwenye ananiambia kuna mama anakuja anasema mgongo hata haezi fanya kazi. Kwa hivyo ndio maana tunawakilisha hii kesi kwa The second largest company operating tea plantations here is the James Finlay and Company from Scotland. They supply Sainsbury's and Tesco's supermarkets, as well as Starbucks. Kifika hospitalini, ndio unaumwa na mgongo sana, lakini unapewa painkiller. Na supervisor amekupea madakika. These Finlay's workers say they have suffered life-changing spinal injuries while working on the company's tea estate. Today is a sign-up event for a class action lawsuit in Scotland. Already, more than 2,000 former and current employees have joined. They are suing Finlay's for $150 million in damages, saying the company failed in its duty of care. Most of them tend to have back problems. They have what we call lumbar myospathies. The discs separate from each other because of the heavy weight. Joy Temba is one of the lawyers working on the case. Is it exploitation? It is. It is. And unfortunately, on the basis of even if I exploit you, you have no other ways. You'll just be here. You still need the money. You still need the food. I meet one of the Finlay's workers signed up to the class action. Joy Sarange. Mimi nilikucha Finlay mwaka wa 2001. Nikiwa mdogo. Nikafanya kazi kwa muda wa miaka tano. Nikaansa kuhua kwa mwongo. The company sent Joyce to hospital. But she says the treatment she received was inadequate. Ukienda hospitali unapewa dawa na kasi. Lakini ukifika huku wanakuambia unapewa dawa uwezi pumushishwa. Unaerekea tena kazi. Nikaanza kuraramika, nikafikia wakati nilikuwa ninaramika, ikafika nikabewa barua ya kuacha kazi. Two years inje pira kufanya kazi, baka watoto wangu ilifika mbaka wakaaja kushule, sababu awaku kuwa, siku kuwa ninapokea chochote kutoka kwao. Watoto fila waliacha shule wakaanza contract, hapo kwa fini days. Hata wapate chakura yenye wanakura kwa nyumba. With the help of her union rep, Joyce was successfully reinstated as a Finlay's employee in 2021, but says she came up against a familiar obstacle. I accompany Joyce to her home on the Finlay's plantations. She lives in worker accommodation side-by-side side identical concrete shacks with corrugated iron roofs. In return for living here, the company subtracts rent from her pay. Joyce says Finlay's used up her best years, producing tea it's sold in the UK for millions of dollars then abandoned her when she got injured. But she says the psychological damage her manager caused by demanding sex for work is even more painful. As a woman working here, how likely is it to be asked for sex in return for work? Yani, mm. daily. It's a daily occurrence. Daily. Joyce eventually reported the sexual harassment she was suffering to Finlay's management. Sasa wakasema wanataka niandikise report. Nikaandikise hiyo report lakini mpaka wa leo sijawahi pata. So no action was taken by the company. Hakuna. Hiyo ndio maisha tunaishi. Joyce has two daughters who are now themselves working on the Finlay's plantations and apparently experiencing the same abuse she did. 
wanafanya hiyo kazi how did your daughters get the jobs ni urafiki hiyo tu ni kuulizwa tu sex how does it make you feel kweli ni majosi enyewe hata tena ninalia kila siku nikijiuliza nilifanyia mungu nini i cannot believe the extent of the sexual abuse and exploitation it makes me feel angry as a father of daughters i wonder which world are we living behind for our children which kind of society will they live in where people in power take advantage of their positions to abuse them and leave them with lifelong trauma Multiple sources pointed to a Finnish manager they said was a serial sexual abuser, John Asava. One of those sources documented him admitting that acts of violent abuse had previously occurred on the plantation where he works as a supervisor. Luna Sava, anapenda kwa mama na wasichana, kulala nao. Mimi nikana eh, tukasi sifanye nini? Kazi si ni si, mimi kuna mimba na mimi mchoo, mimi nipatie mimi, na mimi nipatie huko, ngumu. Sasa paka mimi kafikia mahali na nikaamua nataka kujinyuka. Baba, kwa nikifika tu hivi, fair kurudi basi mimi analala na wanawake wengine ama ah ni kila ni kila wengi ni karibu wanawake saba yeye ni wagonjwa kama mnyako sawa sisi wote ni wagonjwa John Asava is in charge of over 100 employees on this Finless tea farm sasa kila mtu abebe mzigo let me help you kuna mwingine we have a case kuna mwingine alikaa hapa for from Sabili asubuhi six jioni eh eh but papa tuta sawa ko pajo ha yes from tambini asubuhi ah na kula kitu ya kula kweli kulio john freely admits that women get raped by their co-workers on his plantation and he stresses there are very limited consequences for the perpetrators sasa kuna According to other women who work for him, John isn't just a bystander to the rape culture he describes. John Asaba, taku na zuka mizika mtoto wa shule, aku kamatwa, mtoto alijua, mtoto alisema. Two other witnesses confirmed a 14-year-old girl living on the plantation claimed to have been raped by John Asava. 2020. Una kitu ilifanya. Hakuna. During our research into sexual abuse on the Fenless plantations, one name came up more than any other. John Chebochok. Fanya kazi Chebochok, huyu ni fisi. Chebochok has 400 employees working directly under him. The undercover investigator Katie arranges to meet him about a job. Hello? The address for her job interview turns out to be a hotel. Members of the production team are stationed nearby as Katie arrives. Chebochok tells her to follow him into one of the rooms. Niko salama. Asante. 
Sasa kazi ni kubwa. Si tutafanya. You really want a job? Naitaji nini? I hope you are going to be this good. Eh? Kwa kazi. Kai. Tangangana kabisa. Ni kinsaidia kazi. Takusaidia. Bila umekubali ana hapa. Sawa. Kubali nini? Atinda kabidi. Sawa. Mimi nazema. Mhm. Then he stands up and grabs Katie. Considering this is a job interview, Chebochok has already crossed several lines with Katie, but she perseveres. I needed to get tangible evidence that he wanted me to have sex with him in return for work. He said that he had booked a room for us to sleep together, so that needed to happen and not work conversations. I was so scared and so shocked. It must be really difficult for the women who work under Chebocho because he's a sex pest. Chebocho tells Katie theirs can be an ongoing arrangement. Katie refuses once more. Mm. As Chebochok opens the door to leave, he spots a member of the production team keeping watch nearby. Her cover almost blown, Katie has to think on her feet. The production team calls Katie using a prearranged excuse to help her leave. But Chebochok remains suspicious. A week later, Katie got back in touch with Chebochok about the job he had promised. But he ignored her calls and messages before blocking her. Jeremiah Koske has been working for Unilever for the last 24 years. With over 800 employees working under him, he's had access to hundreds of potential sex abuse victims. So too has Samuel Yebe. He's been with Unilever for 13 years, directly in charge of more than 80 tea workers. John Chebochok has been working on the Fenless plantations for 30 years and John Asava for 26 years. Thousands of women have worked under these managers for over three decades. All to produce tea for the UK's biggest brands, supermarkets and high street chains. Women who claim they were forced into sex for work by each of these men say they tested positive for HIV shortly afterwards. 
to knowingly pass the disease on is a crime which carries a sentence of no less than 15 years in prison under Kenyan law. While we were filming, Unilever sold its tea brands and fields to the venture capital firm CVC. It now operates as Lipton Teas and Infusions. No one has ever been convicted of rape or sexual assault on any of these tea companies' property. Kenya is one of the most corrupt countries in the world. Justice is uh, bought by the highest bidder. Brian Olang is a lawyer for the Kenya Human Rights Commission. He's represented women in court who claim they were raped on the premises of multinationals in Kenya. So this worker working for some of these multinational companies with a big financial power are not able to get justice in our courts. The teas produced by Unilever and James Finley are Rainforest Alliance certified. This tells consumers the product is green and produced by workers who are well looked after. Do you think they deserve that certification knowing what you know? I would give it a big no, they don't. Because if you look at the atrocities committed before these products eventually comes to your table, uh, they are heinous crimes. What would you say to the British consumers who drink the tea in pick? If these multinational companies take responsibility and clamp down on abusive managers, only then will the women they employ be able to work without fear of being harassed and brutally exploited. Thank you.